Just to give you all some warning, um, some of my jokes make me out to be a bit of an arrogant cunt. Um, it is all just an act, um, one that I've been perfecting for 26 years. <laughs> uh, some of my jokes are also a bit dark. Um, like all things in life, I like to see how far I can push things. As a gay man, that's cost me a couple of embarrassing trips to anything. <laughs> I'd like to think that if I can take a dick, you can all take a joke. <laughs> now, there are a few of my uh, friends and family members in the audience scratching their heads with confusion right now. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> My, my mum's reaction was uh, really good when I came out. Um, it, it, let me try and do this right. Uh, it was. I knew it was bad news! <laughs> so, so I sat her down and we had a conversation, and it turns out that uh, she was just really upset because she was expecting grandchildren. Um, so we talked it out, and I sort of explained that although it might be quite difficult, I will keep trying for it. <laughs> One line is a good, but I prefer to rack a few up at a time. <laughs> uh, and when I'm uh, when I get sad and down, I like to sometimes buy what I call the tragically single starter pack. Uh, what it is is it's a bottle of gin, a fairly large cucumber, um, some, <laughs> some, some slimline tonic because uh, obviously I'm very conscious about my weight, um, and uh, some lubricant. Um, <laughs> And just for the avoidance of doubt for you sick fucks out there, no, I don't put cucumber in my gin and tonic. <laughs> <laughs> Best way to come out. Um, uh, I've also uh, lost quite a bit of weight recently. Um, I've lost about four stone, which if you're one of these strange people that use the metric system, that's about 26 kilograms. If you aren't impressed by that, you're right, because you've achieved fuck all if you weigh, lose the weight of a small child and you're still fat. <laughs> Being the fat kid at school did have some advantages though. Uh, I was the only altar boy that didn't get molested. <laughs> Although I am a little bit disappointed about that. <laughs> I've also um, reduced the amount I drink. Um, I still drink fairly regularly, but um, I've sort of cut down on the amount I consume on a night out. Um, this ironically was a conscious decision because I got sick to death of waking up with headaches so bad I thought I was Michael Schumacher. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait for a few more jokes time. <laughs> um, so, I've had a bit of a tough year this year. Um, I live with three people that don't accept me. I split up with my ex of three years. More confusion from the family members right there. Um, <laughs> I've just left a job uh, from a company that didn't value me, and I also fancy a guy that doesn't want to know me. It's safe to say that I've enjoyed 2018 about as much as the Jewish community of Western Germany enjoyed 1941. <laughs> So I mentioned the guy that I, that I like, um, so we've actually got some great banter going on at the minute. Uh, what, what I like to do is I like to send him nice texts and then he doesn't reply. <laughs> or we'll arrange a date and then he won't turn on. It, it, it kind of reminds me of when somebody describes somebody else as having a dry sense of humour, which we all kind of know is just a polite way of saying someone's a complete and utter cunt. <laughs> So, my brother's in here tonight, uh, giving me some support. Where are you, Miles? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's got a really dry sense of humour. <laughs> I win. Don't worry guys, uh, there's no sibling rivalry going on here. That ended when I got my second degree. 
So as, as, I, as I just alluded to there, I've actually got two degrees. I've got a, a, a Master of Science, and that's what I'm officially um, known as, which did wonders for my ego. Um, and I'm also an atheist, which of course goes hand in hand, really. Not because I believe in science over religion, uh, just because I'm not a fucking idiot. <laughs> Speaking of fucking idiots, Diane Abbott <laughs> said on live radio that she was going to hire 10,000 uh, police officers uh, over a four year period for £300,000. If we forget overheads and profits for a second, uh, that allows for an annual salary of £7.50 per police officer. <laughs> After that comment, I'm convinced that Diane Abbott is actually just Harvey Price in drag. <laughs> That is my one and only joke about politics. I, I, I try to stay away from politics with comedy because um, you, you, know, you know how it is. Uh, it just kind of gets a bit messy when you have to go back and explain all the jokes to all the lefties who don't understand politics. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I know what you're all thinking, Tory cunt. <laughs> I guess that's what, you ha what happens when you joke about the Holocaust and master's degrees. <laughs> but uh, I used to be really into politics, um, mainly because I'm an argumentative twat. Um, but I'm sure I speak for most people in here when I say that um, politics ever since Brexit has just got really fucking boring. Um, everybody's banging on about Brexit, everyone's banging on about May. They're always slagging May off. It's May this, May that, May shit at dancing. May's got, May's got is a shit deal, vote of no confidence for May. I think it's really harsh though, because I thought May was fantastic in Top Gear. <laughs> Don't you find it funny that people who always give advice are always the people that really shouldn't? <laughs> it's always people who have got shit jobs that give you like career advice. People who are poor as fuck give you financial advice. People who have never had a relationship giving you relationship advice. And it's always the priests telling me how to suck a cock. <laughs> I always thought it was a bit weird how my friends got ten Hail Marys, but I had to get on my knees to repent. <laughs> I find that um, going to the zoo and going to a primary school are very, very similar experiences. Uh, the animals are always running around, screaming and shitting themselves. It's absolute bedlam without the zookeepers, and you will nearly always get escorted off the premises if you touch the animals. <laughs> it's kind of strange though, um, when, when somebody likes somebody like you, they end up doing loads of crazy shit to try and impress them. Like, I've seen other people on social media, like, posting embarrassing pictures, buying clothes they can't afford, or doing a stand-up comedy gig for cancer research. <laughs> but, but don't worry, guys, if he's not impressed by jokes about the Holocaust and shoving cucumbers up my ass, uh, my mixtape comes out in January. <laughs> When my uh, father passed away, um, I wrote this speech, and it was at this moment when I uh, realised my talent for comedy. Um, apparently it wasn't the most appropriate of times to practice. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking, I'm joking. Uh, I actually wrote this really, really heartwarming, touching uh, speech that was sort of really motivating, and um, it had absolutely fuck all to do with my dad, but I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to be centre of attention. <laughs> I'd just like to address something um, a bit serious now. Um, like everybody here, um, I'm doing this for cancer research so that hopefully one day we can all find a cure uh, and all the cancer patients can stop stealing my attention. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've been amazing and you've all got drive to <laughs>